I'm originally from Venezuela, raised in New York, went to school in Massachusetts, and then traveled all over the world in various jobs, and became interested in all things scientific from an early age. After I left university, I did a stint in pharma. That's where I really became aware that there is actually a huge gap between what we need as a society in the future and what resources we can actually access. So I've been researching endometriosis for over 16 years now, and I think it's really taken me that long to realize that there are not too many people in the world who will take on the challenge of forming a company to develop a better diagnostic for this condition. I was kind of waiting for somebody else to do it. And then finally one day just realized, maybe it has to be us, maybe it has to be myself and Lauren. The climate crisis we have is due to less than one billion people having a great lifestyle. We can't penalize the other seven billion for that reason. That means we have to provide energy in a way that's not carbon positive. And that led me to looking at how do you build the lowest cost molecule that can deliver energy. Doing business from Argentina is really difficult. And we saw an opportunity in New York because we needed to be close to investors, logistically close enough to farmers, also to the chemical industry that is providing products to farmers that we are providing tech to them. And also being in New York is easier if you want to cooperate with companies in Europe. The funny thing is I always wanted to move to New York. It was always kind of like a, like a dream in the back, you know. I like the, the energy in New York, I like the, the vibes, you know, it's, it's, when you come here, it's like different, everything's go, go, go. I mean, New York's also investing a ton of money in, in biotech, and there's a lot of talent here. Yeah, yeah, just clearly look at it. Okay, I'm looking at it, it's pink. I am science. Call me Bill Nye. So some of the best advice that I've received is to position yourself with the customers and the people you're trying to sell to and develop those relationships and make them deep, make them meaningful so that you can have meaningful partnerships or, or collaborations going forward. I have to be present. I have to be the expert in the field. I have to learn about patient's experience and doctor's experience. When we were discussing how difficult it is to develop a new cancer treatment, how long it takes, and how risky it is for the investors to invest money, and how risky it is for the founders to dedicate years of their life. And so someone said, there's no other way to do it. This is the only way. Wait. OK, go ahead. At Zias Bio, we design multifunctional proteins that can replace all animal-derived proteins in a variety of industries. Affinia has developed the first early diagnostic blood test for endometriosis. Carbon Bridge uses waste gases to produce the lowest cost renewable liquid fuels. Present is developing bispecific antibodies to prevent recurrent cancer. Biometallica is revolutionizing the future of e-waste and autocatalyst recycling with cutting-edge biotech. Terra is decarbonizing supply chains by upcycling agri-food waste into valuable products. At Ernest Agriculture, we design probiotic consortium that increase crop yields for farmers. Univio are capable of both reducing chemical use in current practices and enabling a new generation of biologicals. At ACOR, we've unlocked the secrets of the ocean to control bacteria and fungi from deep sea to deep space. Hi. I'm Bethany Schwartz, and I'm the program manager with IndieBio New York. We're really excited to welcome you to our Class 7 Demo Day, where you'll see videos of nine different companies. After each of the videos, there will be a short interview with the founders so you can get to know them better. If you register as an accredited investor, you'll receive a link to our investor portal where you can review company decks and book time to meet with each of the founders. 
If you're interested in applying to the IndieBio program, you can go to our website at IndieBio.co. With that said, sit back and enjoy hearing what our founders have been working on. Animal proteins are used every day, not just for food, but in cosmetics, healthcare, advanced research, packaging, and more. Regardless of the application, their limited versatility means one protein delivers one function, and one function alone. If more functions are needed, more proteins need to be included, compounding unsustainability and adding needless cost and complexity. Things must change to achieve a greener world, and now more than ever, biotechnology can provide a solution. Zyus Bio harness smart design and fermentation to produce multifunctional proteins that condense functionality of many proteins into one powerhouse molecule. We analyze thousands of proteins, identify the functional motifs and bring them together in unique combinations relevant to the application using our protein platform molecule, producing completely new multifunctional proteins that can be easily produced at scale. We have applied this approach to the personal care market deploying high-performance extended functionality replacements for animal-derived keratin, silk, elastin, and collagen. Here our proteins go above and beyond, delivering additional benefits such as powerful antioxidation, UV protection, and water resistance, benefits unobtainable by traditional animal-derived proteins. We envision our approach will become the global standard, not just in personal care, but healthcare, industrial processing, and food production positioning Zias Bio as the pioneer of sustainable multifunctional proteins. I'm now joined by David, who's co-founder and CEO of Zias Bio. Hello, David. Hi, Stephen. Nice to meet you. Okay, so I've got some questions for you. Going to start off with, what can you tell me about your protein, your recombinant protein that's at the heart of your platform? Yeah, so, I mean, the proteins that we develop, they're multifunctional um, in, their, in, their, in their core. Um, and this differentiates us from others in the field where they're just making single function recombinant versions of natural um, proteins. Whereas we have got uh, a platform that allows us to make bespoke proteins that deliver and go beyond the functional capabilities of, of natural um, proteins. Okay, so you've got quite a bit of traction already, I would say. You've got like your product market fits with customers. So what value are you providing to these customers that you have? So it's, it's, it's multi-layered. So um, the multifunctionality is again like at, at its core. Um, and what these proteins allow our customers to do is to replace several traditional ingredients with just one Zyus Bio protein. Um, and that simplifies the formulations and cuts costs, but also adds a lot of performance claims to the uh, products that they're formulating using our proteins. Okay. You've also got what I would say is kind of a very kind of capital efficient business mm -hmm. model. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about um, some elements of that? Yeah, so unlike some of our competitors, we're running um, a, a licensing model. So that allows us to stay very lean on the capex. Um, allows us to have a lot of good um, uh, gross margin um, on, on the license. Um, and how that works is that we work with our customers, so we sell them licenses to um, access, manufacture, and use our proteins. And this covers the spectrum of, um, uh, of uses of these proteins from evaluation all the way through to manufacture of our protein at scale. Okay. And your go-to market as it is now mm -hmm. is... Uh, personal care cosmetics. Correct, yes. Uh, where do you see this going? So where we see this going, so we've got this beachhead market of, of cosmetics and personal care where we can replace the animal derived proteins that are used consistently across this market space. But subsequent to that we see that we're going to have um, very valuable application in the life science market, so replacing animal derived uh, materials in the cell culture space and, and tissue engineering space. Um, and further beyond that, we, we can even imagine our, our proteins going into you know, clean food production. Okay, okay. And your biggest challenge going ahead? Uh, the biggest challenge that we face right now is um, educating some of our um, uh, customers and prospects on what it is our proteins can do because they're radically different. It's nothing that they've ever seen before. 
So what we do is educate them on what we can do to fulfill their bespoke requirements. And then once they've tested our proteins, they, 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 really, uh, they really get behind the prospect. Okay, so um, like you're one of the companies that we, um, we, uh, we relocated from the UK to mm -hmm. New York City. So can you tell us a bit about your experience in the city? I mean, yeah, coming to, coming to New York is, is wildly different from the UK uh, landscape. Um, it's been very valuable for us, um, connecting to our um, customers. There's a lot of the you know, prospective customers that are just across the river in, in, in New Jersey. We've been able to make those connections, you know, facilitated through IndieBio. Uh, but just really being plugged into the, um, the, the VC landscape, it's a much more vibrant um, uh, investment economy. Um, and yeah, we're, we're really seeing some positive outcomes from, from getting involved in this now. Great. Okay. Well, um, uh, we've really enjoyed having you here and uh, being part of your journey. Thank you very much. Using our protein materials, products are going to be much simpler. They're going to have less ingredients, which means less emissions associated with producing those, which means that the brands and the ingredient giants of this world can actually say that they're producing things at net zero. Um, and given the scale that these companies operate on, that's, that's a huge win. Your cancer is back. It's a statement no one wants to hear. And yet, that's the reality for over 50% of cancer patients. My mother was cancer-free for five years when she heard these words. It was devastating. Cancer survivors and their families deserve a world where hearing all clear truly means cancer-free. So how can cancer return after several rounds of chemotherapy and radiation treatments? Traditional therapies are very good at targeting fast-growing, dividing cells. However, cancer cells can go into a dormant state and evade treatment. These cells can awaken at any time. Furthermore, neighboring cells in the tumor microenvironment can provide the nutrients needed for these dormant cancer cells to survive and become reactivated. That's where Fresent comes in. We are developing a much needed treatment to prevent recurrent cancer. We want to eliminate dormant cancer cells during remission. We use unique type of antibodies called bispecific antibodies to block proteins that cancer cells depend on. One of these proteins is acid ceramidase, crucial for cancer cells transitioning from dormancy to activity. The other is insulin-like growth factor 2, which can trigger cell division and tumor growth. By stopping these two proteins from entering cancer cells, we can prevent tumor growth and cause dormant cancer cells to die. With just one molecule, our bispecific antibody accomplishes a double effect. Two hits for the price of one. At present, we are committed to a future where cancer therapies offer renewed hope and the real possibility of long-lasting remission. Let's change the narrative and fight for a world where cancer stays gone for good. I'm now joined by Natasha, CEO of Fresent. Um, Natasha, welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions for you. I'm happy to answer them. Okay, so what other therapies are out there for treating dormant cancers? Um, there are other treatments that have been developed for treating, um, for targeting dormant cancer cells. And these treatments are called senolytic therapies. They have been successfully applied for blood cancers, but without much success for solid tumors um, that we are going after. So that is our differentiating factor, number one. Number two is that existing um, therapies targeting dormant cells are um, working by going into the cells, and our approach is targeting cells from outside. So our drug does not have to penetrate solid tumor, which has been a big challenge with other therapies. And we'd, would you describe that as the uniqueness of your solution to this problem then? Yes, so uh, in addition to targeting 
important factors that are required for survival of dormant cells. Uh, from outside, we are taking in consideration the entire ecosystem in which cancer, dormant cancer cells are growing, and we are interrupting the communication between tumor cells that are dormant and the supporting uh, cells in the environment, and this is our secret sauce. Okay. So let's talk a bit about the IP that you have around uh, Fresen's uh, platform technology. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. There are two levels of um, IP protection for our technology. Um, we are developing bispecific antibody that um, is generated from two monoclonal antibodies. So initially we'll have IP protection on two individual monoclonal antibodies, which we then re-engineer to create one molecule from two monoclonal antibodies, and that will uh, be protected with additional IP. Okay, all right. So you've been having discussions with clinicians all the way through the program. Can you tell us a bit about the feedback that you've been getting from clinicians? Yes, um, I think overwhelmingly we get a support from clinicians across different indications. We spoke with head and neck cancer clinicians, um, lung cancer clinicians, and gastric uh, cancer. And everyone um, agreed that this kind of treatment can be applied for patients that are successfully treated with initial treatment and relapse very quickly. So in the first six months to one year, our treatment will provide this protection and prevent recurrent cancer from happening. Okay, so to just to pick up on that, so the specific indication that you're going for, like that first indication that you're looking at treating, so what are you thinking? So our initial, fo initial focus is on head and neck cancer, mm. but uh, we are also looking at small cell lung cancer, gastric cancer, and ovarian cancer. Okay. So you're one of our New York companies that we source from New York. Um, so can you tell us a bit about uh, your experience, uh, what it was like, uh, the program? Yes, it has been amazing to be part of the growing ecosystem in New York, and we're lucky to be part of IndieBiome with all the support that the program provided, starting from the lab space and um, infrastructure for us to grow as a company with the business support and expanding the network um, for our company to grow. And being in New York also uh, gives us an opportunity to work with leading clinical institutions like Memorial Sloan Catering Cancer Center and Mount Sinai, and we'll be working with them to um, bring our technology from R&D to clinic. Okay. Well, we've been very lucky to have you in the program, actually. Thank you. No we've problem. been lucky, too. <laughs> okay. When I considered starting a company, it was a transition time. I learned to believe that I can actually do this. When I met my co-founder, Lina, this confidence grew because we have complementary skills that will help us to develop this solution faster. Green fuels have great potential, but they struggle to match fossil fuels in cost. This is because most green fuel makers use green inputs, but follow the same production process as traditional fossil fuels, intense pressure and temperatures, which forces a higher cost. Carbon Bridge operates with 100 times lower pressure and 800 degrees lower temperature slashing the expense of capital equipment in the production of renewable methanol. We do this by using microbes to convert waste gases to methanol, which reduces both the carbon and energy profile of the process. Our scientific setup is relatively simple. Methane is fed to microbes, carbon dioxide is added, and we get cheap, clean methanol. So this opens up a new engineering challenge, one we have addressed. Imagine this, gases that microbes need to live are incredibly hard to dissolve in a contained environment. And too much methanol can kill the microbes themselves. Our bioreactor design bypasses these problems by directly supplying the gases to the microbes and continuously removing the methanol. All this combined leads to a green fuel with significantly less cost and is drop-in ready for marine applications. 
Now at any given time, there are about 45,000 commercial ships afloat, an opportunity for up to two gallons of methanol per second. That is why we're going after the marine fuel industry first. So join us at Carbon Bridge. We're leading an economical change in the way that renewable fuels are produced and helping to rapidly decarbonize industries across sea, air, and land. Okay, I'm joined now by Manu, who's co-founder and CEO of Carbon Bridge. Hi, Manu. Hi, Steve. I'm okay, here. so uh, tell me why Carbon Bridge matters. Tell me why. The climate crisis is really an energy crisis, and to solve the climate crisis, you have to solve energy. And you have to do that in a way that is equitable in the sense of uh, being accessible to everyone. And, and that means we have to change the way it's made and where it's made. This actually dovetails very nicely with renewables, and that's, that fusion is why it matters. It means we can give power to the people, with renewable resources anywhere in the world. Okay, lots of people are doing something similar. Mm. Okay, so what sets you apart? We use waste gases as the core resource for our projects. And also we're using those waste gases to make microbial methanol, where the gases are fed into microbes that make the methanol for us. But the process of doing so is a fusion of biology and hardware which is unique to us and allows us to have the, a very high productivity in a limited volume and obviously a dramatic reduction in cost that comes from that. Okay, and let's touch on that. So what's the value that you're creating for the customer? For any uh, adoption of fuel, it has to be uh, very low cost uh, to drive adoption. Otherwise you end up in a subsidies war and everything else. Our goal is to hit the magic number of less than six cents per megajoule as a unit of energy. And that will allow us to compete head on with fossil fuels and take them out. And that's what sets you know, the, the value to the customer that they can use renewable fuels without giving up anything. Okay, so how are you gonna roll this out? How does this scale kind of across the country? So our, first of all, our the resource we're looking for are waste gases. So wastewater treatment facilities, which is really a nice way of saying we're treating human SH1T. And so that, there's plenty of that where people live. And the next part is to get uh, waste gases from landfill, which is also where people live. So we have a continued uh, access to that waste, waste material. And there's several thousand wastewater treatment facilities across the U.S. that are untapped and several, uh, several hundred landfills that are not being currently used. So I think these are the uh, starting points for us to take on this, this journey. Yeah. I think one of the things that you told me was that normally that methane is just burnt off. Correct. Today, the cost of converting that methane uh, into energy, electricity, often exceeds the cost or the value that would be generated by selling that electricity to the grid. So today, a lot of these facilities light a match and burn up that methane. Um, we could use that instead and prevent fossil fuels coming in. Right. So you are one of the founders that we kind of dragged from California all the right. way to New York City. So tell us a bit about your New York City experience, how you found it. Uh, yeah, the weather is trippy. We started with a very hot period, hot and humid. Now it's freezing cold, so we need to work on this New York. But uh, New York does have benefits. It's a 24-7 city. Uh, everything's going on. There's always something happening. And, uh, you know, that's uh, one of the most, uh, one of the richest sets of cultural things, uh, theater, museums, so something I want to explore. Okay, let's do it together. Okay. We should. Okay, thank you very much. Most of the biogas that's available today in the US is being flared, i.e. being burned. And what we're doing is we're looking for a way to turn those cost centers run by municipalities into profit centers. 
we do not see any feedstock shortage. What we do see is time to deployment as a constraint. Our journey to help farmers begins in the untouched protected prairies, where roots grow deeper than 10 feet, the soil is rich in nutrients, and plants thrive naturally. Here we discovered a diverse world of microbes, tiny organisms that play a huge role in plant health and growth. At Ernest Agriculture, we brought back over 2,000 different microbes from these lands to our lab and created a vast library of nature's best kept secrets, each specimen containing its own unique abilities from fighting off disease to helping plants absorb nutrients. But how do we know which works best? That's where our proprietary algorithm comes in. It analyzes three key factors, the resources microbes consume, the mechanisms they use to benefit plants, and their optimal conditions for efficiency. With this data, our algorithm designed and optimized the perfect microbial consortium, tailored to adhere to what we call the 3P standard. This means our microbes are selected to protect against diseases, insects and weeds, promote nutrient soil health and drought tolerance, and perform in various environments and on different plants. We've turned this scientific breakthrough into an easy to use product, an all-in-one microbial seed coating that boosts nutrient uptake and disease fighting capabilities. Our initial tests on a one acre field have also shown promising results, not just in crop yields, but also in capturing carbon into the soil. We're now ready to take this to the next step and bring this much needed solution to farmers everywhere. With the power of Ernest Agriculture's microbes, we're not just increasing yields. We're setting a new standard in sustainable and profitable farming. The future of agriculture is here and is rooted in the wisdom of nature. Okay, what an amazing story. Uh, for Ernest Agriculture, I'm here with Eddie. How are you doing today, Eddie? Excited to tell my story. Excited to hear it. So um, one of the questions I think a lot of people have about this space is, what does the regulatory landscape look like and how does Ernest navigate that? Yeah, so the Environmental Protection Agency uh, handles uh, biologicals in this space. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two routes. There's a biostimulant, which is not that regulated. Mm -hmm. You can basically get a product out pretty quick. And the biopesticide, which is a lot more capital intensive mm -hmm. and it takes longer to get, uh, you to, there's various tests you gotta do. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are, we're, this year we're rolling out both products. We're bi rolling out a biostimulant and a biopesticide. Okay, and this isn't necessarily a new technology, but it does seem to be exploding in recent years in terms of commercialization. Um, what does the competition look like right now for Ernest and how do you know that you're better than they are? Yeah, so we actually just did a field trial in Illinois uh, this past year mm -hmm. in summer, um, and we're showing that we're 45% better than the leading biologicals in the space. Mm -hmm. We tested against a leading uh, nutrient competitor mm -hmm. and a leading disease competitor. And then we're showing 8% better yields versus wow. an untreated plant. So it's kind cool. of substantial. Um, and I think what really sets us apart, to answer your second part, mm -hmm. is, is that we're taking a consortium approach. You okay. know? The traditional approach was always single or double microbes, and that's kind of what our competitors in the space have. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not to say that we can't include their microbes or bacteria mm -hmm. into our product, mm -hmm. yeah. which is why we built a an algorithm that kind of determines which bacteria is going to play well together mm -hmm. in a consortium and be effective in the field in different regions, different temperatures. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's that's where we're, we're different. Wow, that's fascinating. And uh, in terms of kind of scale, that's always a question with biotech. Um, how do you reach those industrial kind of levels of production and distribution of your product? And what does that look like for the next you know years ahead for Ernest? Yeah, so this, this year we have over 2,000 acres and we'll be able to handle that in, internally. Mm -hmm. uh, next year, we definitely want to leverage our seed developer partners. Mm -hmm. uh, they already have their infrastructures built, their supply chains, their uh, customers. So we want to leverage that. But um, to parallel, we can also, in our backyard in Illinois, mm -hmm. the USDA just made it a bio hub for fermentation. So oh. it's kind of huge. So uh, they have a big capacity to do fermentation for us if we need to scale on that, that side. Wow, that's incredible. And then the all important question, uh, how do you like living in New York and have you found any good places for a good pizza? Yeah, like I said, New York has always been a dream for me to live here. Um, I like the, the energy here is, is insane. Um, and then 
restaurants. I, I quite, I mean, there's so much food here, mm -hmm. so many choices, which I love. But I always, you know, I miss Chicago pizza. I'm not gonna say it's the best, but you know, I don't want to get killed. It's but. controversial. Okay, we're in the right there. Well, thank you, Eddie, for your time. Back to you. Thanks. Uh, I venture accelerator. It's a University of Illinois uh, accelerator program, and then in that program is where I met Gabe. At the end of 2019, he's like, I need somebody to help me run this. What drew me to Gabe was. He's like the opposite of me, and that's why I think we work so well together. He's very intelligent, so you can just tell off the bat that, you know, he knows what he's talking about. And then his energy kind of really brought me into working with him. <laughs>
And then there's Microterra as well, which announced a new product called Flora, uh, which is a functional fiber ingredient, which not only uh, increases the perception of sweetness in foods, but also reduces the reliance of sugar in those products. And they simultaneously announced a partnership with Tetra Pak, so they'll be testing their ingredients uh, across different product applications in the coming year. And I'm going to tell you about three companies from our human health portfolio, starting off with Rizlab that makes a portable white blood cell counter. Huge amount of progress has been made by this company, both in the program uh, where they did a clinical study and also beyond that, uh, recently received a 2.5 million BARDA grant and also published the clinical study data just this week. The next company I want to tell you about is Cayuga Biotech, making a coagulant factor. Huge amount of progress being seen both in the program and beyond. Just about to enter the phase one clinical trials. Uh, they've received a grant from the US Department of Defense for over three million to help them fund their clinical trials. And the third company I want to talk about is Cell Bioengines, another New York-based company uh, that's actually in the clinic. They've recently signed an agreement with Mattel uh, to do the production that they need for the clinical lot. Again, it's another company that we've seen from very early days all the way into the clinic. What you've seen here is just a small sample of the many companies across the IndieBio New York portfolio. If you're interested in any of the companies that we've highlighted or any of the companies in the broader portfolio, please contact us. When you're investing in an IndieBio company, you're investing in the future of human and planetary health. Come and join us. The gap between what we need and what we have continues to increase. That means we're paying more money for food that is harder to find, with the projected 1 billion people experiencing severe food insecurity by 2025. But perhaps the solution is to look beyond growing more food and instead look at what's being wasted. TerraBio Industries turns agri-food byproducts into ready-to-use sugar and protein ingredients. That's why we're teaming up with breweries. We're helping them keep brewer spent grains out of landfills by preserving, transporting, and breaking them down with our very own upcycling platform. Our dual extraction process utilizes everything these grains have to offer by breaking down tough fiber into sugars and unlocking the protein within to create two products in parallel from the same grains. Recyclose, the world's first spent grain sugar, and Proteina, an upcycled plant protein ingredient. Best of all, food manufacturers can get these upcycled sugar and protein ingredients with the price and performance they're looking for. But beyond brewer spent grain, there's actually a billion tons of agri-food side streams just waiting to power the future economy, creating a healthier, more circular supply chain. Terra Bio Industries, decarbonizing value chains with upcycling. Hey, joining me now is Steve George, CEO and co-founder of Terra Bio Industries. Congrats, Steve, on making it to Demo Day. Thank you for having us. Of course. And so a question on the top of my mind, at least, is the phrase meaningful upcycling. What exactly does that mean? Well, the end goal of upcycling is to reduce the impact uh, that our activities have on the environment while making better use of what we already produce. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that upcycled solutions need to be as good or better than conventional solutions, mm -hmm. hence the term meaningful upcycling. Upcycled products have to be produced using scalable processes, mm -hmm. and the products themselves have to be versatile mm -hmm. and have to be price competitive with current solutions mm -hmm. to make adoption that much easier. Absolutely, and you can't sacrifice some of the performance as well of the products. Can you say, you know, confidently that Terabyte Industries, you know, meets those uh, requirements? 
we go to customers and we ask them to evaluate it, mm -hmm. evaluate our products in their own facilities. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. Uh, an upcycle product needs to match the performance of mm -hmm. a conventional product mm -hmm. at the same price point in order to make it easy for our customers to adopt our, pro uh, our products mm -hmm. and switch away from conventional products. And yeah. so we, uh, meaningful upcycling is also about making that whole process as easy as possible. Okay, well, thank you for educating me. I'm um, curious about the, the history as well of Terra Bio Industries. Uh, what was the genesis for uh, the idea that became Terra? Terra Bio Industries was really born of a desire by Ricardo and myself to take our knowledge in bioprocess engineering mm -hmm. and apply it to a problem that's as impactful as possible. So mm -hmm. we searched around for different problems mm -hmm. and meaningful upcycling was the most difficult one we could find. It's a pretty tough one to, uh, you know, put your minds to. But uh, I'm curious uh, how you're thinking about the future, not only in terms of impact, but also the traction that you need to accomplish. Of course. So there's a billion tons of agri-food side streams that are waiting to be upcycled. Mm -hmm. If you do a quick back of the envelope calculation, that billion tons of, uh, of wasted product mm -hmm. becomes a couple of mil hundred million tons of upcycled products, wow. which then saves several hundred million tons of carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big target. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, we need partners, mm -hmm. people who are in the supply chain mm -hmm. who are willing to work with us to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing right now. We're getting partners and we have partners in terms of feedstock supply, mm -hmm. in terms of the ingredient producers and the chemical companies who mm -hmm. use our products, mm -hmm. as well as the CPG manufacturers who mm -hmm. see that their customers are demanding better, more sustainable products mm -hmm. and so who want to work with companies like ours. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they, we've already received seven letters of intent, intent as an example, mm -hmm. and we have 10 product trials that are scheduled for, for early this year mm -hmm. with more to follow on later in the year. So that's just showing that we're getting started on this journey really quickly. Incredible. Uh, and on the subject of kind of timing, uh, you know, why is now the right time for upcycling uh, to really make it into the mainstream? Right now is, is the exact right time mm -hmm. for a company like ours to come into this space. We're seeing uh, three different parties who are essential to making upcycling a success come together to realize that we need to reduce our carbon emissions, mm -hmm. we need to reduce the amount of resources that we use. So we have government who are really waking up to this threat and who are passing legislation mm -hmm. to reduce uh, carbon emissions and to create a circular supply chain. We have companies responding to this legislation and setting aggressive targets. Mm -hmm. And we have customers who are really demanding better, more, uh, more, um, uh, more sustainable solutions for what they consume every day. Okay, amazing. Sounds like Terra is right on that crest of the wave. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing, obviously, all the success that you're going to have. Thank you again for your time, Steve. Thank you very much. we look at the waste stream in detail or the side stream in detail, we try to see the potential of that side stream. Then we see, okay, well, if we put it through our technology, what do we get out of the tail end of it? And more importantly, do markets want what we are producing? Because in the end, we are focused on side streams that are able to produce products that will be readily adoptable. Thousands of years, the ocean has provided us with nutrition, cosmetics, therapeutics, and energy. For all the damage that we've inflicted on the ocean, it is resilient, and it contains the secrets for solving some of our most challenging problems, like cleaning our drinking water. We're fortunate to live in a society where we can turn on our faucets and expect potable water to come flowing out of our taps and yet our drinking water is not as clean as it could be. Bacterial slime called biofilm accumulates in the pipes that supply the water we drink every single day. The slime acts as a thick and impenetrable barrier to water flow that can contain thousands of harmful bacteria that are incredibly hard to kill. Looking to how the problem is solved by nature, ACOR discovered molecules in the coral reef that uniquely remove the slime in minutes and prevent its formation for days. We made bio-inspired water treatments using ingredients that mimic the features of the natural molecules. And we know that they work. We've been validated by NASA, yes, NASA. Hundreds of miles above us, slime builds up faster and thicker 
to protect bacteria from the intense radiation from space. This slime had contaminated the water recycling system used on board the International Space Station. In testing at NASA over the course of three years, ACOR's water treatment eliminated the problem, enabling the life support system to make precious, pure water. Our product was last launched to the ISS in 2022 for further testing. Back on Earth, our mission is to replace the $43 billion worth of water treatment chemicals that are toxic and ineffective against biofilm slime. ACOR cleans water better from deep sea to deep space. Okay, I'm thrilled to be joined here by Marilyn Bruno, CEO and co-founder of ACOR. Great to see you, Marilyn. Thanks, Alex. So after watching that video, I think all of us are asking how this tech can be applied to various different markets. So uh, for you, what is your initial market and why have you chosen that market? Yeah, it's a great question. Our, our beachhead is the water treatment chemical market because as you know, you can't sell chemicals without regulatory approval. Sure. So we uh, discovered uh, natural chemicals that need to be registered and uh, uh, EPA approved. Mm -hmm. The chemicals we're selling now are already EPA approved, Amazing. so that's pretty exciting. We're market ready. Okay, so market ready right now, and then yeah. potential expansion to new markets when you get there. Oh, the absolutely. Okay, very exciting to hear that. So lots of work, obviously, ahead of you. Uh, I imagine there's a fantastic team behind ACOL. Could you just tell us a little bit about the team and how you imagine the team's going to grow in the future? Well, the heart of the company is Cynthia Brazel, who made the discovery in the ocean. Mm -hmm. She's a marine and medical microbiologist who discovered 17 novel marine microbes, mm -hmm. including a new genus and several new species. Wow. Uh, that produce hundreds of n novel chemicals. They're mm -hmm. new, never seen before, like mm -hmm. new antimicrobials, new dispersants. Mm -hmm. So it's been a very exciting journey to figure out what are they and what they do. What do they do? Amazing. And other team members in, uh, behind the science? Absolutely. So Anne Lamza was brought on board, mm -hmm. a PhD microbiologist, to assist with the lab and pilot projects. Mm -hmm. And then Keith uh, DeFiori mm -hmm. with years of experience in the in the uh, New York Stock Exchange and I drive the, the business side. Incredible. So it's good to have a Wall Street person in the team and to know money. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, you know, obviously every great team needs great partnerships. How have you approached that so far and have you made any key partnerships to date? Right. So there's no question that having a chemical partner would be our ideal. Mm -hmm. We've had many discussions and are still in uh, negotiations. Mm -hmm. But uh, for now, we think that um, showing our product in various use cases mm -hmm. is going to drive that market demand mm -hmm. because water is used in every industrial process and we're finding interest coming from the food sector, oil and gas sector, bioenergy sector and mm -hmm. other sectors besides straight water treatment, which is our first focus. Incredible. And you've already got orders in like the order of tons. Oh yes, yeah. so one the first request for quote that we had mm -hmm. was for 20 tons of our product every six months. That's really daunting. Mm -hmm. So we are taking our time putting the pieces into place for mm -hmm. the logistics so that we can have the raw material readily mm -hmm. accessible in mm -hmm. very high volumes. Mm -hmm. And we've achieved that, so we're really ready to go. Great. And then uh, we're here at Demo Day, I can't believe four months have gone so quickly, uh, but reflecting on your experience, uh, how has IndieBio helped ACOR move forward? Well, IndieBio has, has been a tremendous catalyst. We were able to link with uh, buyer groups mm -hmm. that we're interested in working with and most importantly investors. Mm -hmm. So IndieBio is a machine uh, giving us a lot of exposure through matchmaking and speed dating and mm -hmm. a couple of conferences that they've put together. Not to mention the excellent mentors that we've had along the way. So mm -hmm. uh, we, we now know what investors want to see and how they want to see it presented and that's been a real plus. Awesome. Well, we've been you know so pleased to have you in the team and uh, I just learned that you're a native New Yorker, so is oh, there yes. any way we're able to tempt you away from San Diego? Uh, you can tempt me very easily. <laughs> all, we, all we need is the funding to set up a company here, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm here, so it would be a joy. We'd love to have you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you much, so Marilyn. Much. So the interesting part about ACOR is that first the chemicals from the ocean were discovered, and then it was a question of finding out how exactly did they work. What did they work against? 
And when you're dealing with hundreds of natural chemicals, this was a long process, and what was the end result is a portfolio of 70 chemicals. We are in the midst of an agricultural transition, moving away from chemicals that degrade our soils and health and shifting towards organic production. Some of us expect this revolution overnight, but this is impossible for farmers under pressure to boost yields, especially when most biopesticides are still less cost-effective than large-scale agrochemicals. Biopesticides have accelerated in the last decade, yet they still only make up for 5% of the total market. Farmers still rely on synthetic pesticides to feed billions of people. That is where Univio comes in. We are capable of both reducing chemical use in current practices and enabling a new generation of biologicals that improve yields and crop resilience through more efficient formulations. How we do it? We have created a microparticle from upcycled natural polymer, basically a sugar chain sourced from crustacean waste. We bend these polymers to make a small particle which has a natural synergy with plants. It has a modified charge and size, which can both absorb the active ingredients and increase their permeability onto plants. To put it simply, our particle added to a farmer's pesticide formula increased the amount of actives that reached their target by increasing their penetration power. For example, by combining our particle with the most common biofungicides, farmers can reduce the use rate and cost by half and even work with toxic chemicals like glyphosate. Less actives, same effect. Whether they make biological or synthetic crop protectants, manufacturers can mix our particles into their products to reduce their cost or minimize harmful runoff. This means farmers can adopt faster organic production or maintain their current techniques, but in much lower doses, helping them to comply with the newest regulations. With 8 billion people on the planet, we cannot return to old practices. So, if we play our cards right, we can accelerate the transition to a chemical-free agriculture. Better for us and the environment. Wow, what an amazing ag tech company. And here with me is Matthias Figliosi, its CEO and co-founder. Great to see you, Matthias. Great to see you too, Alex. So uh, one of the questions that I have is a pretty large one. What is the vision of this company? How do you imagine the next 10 years and how is Unibio going to evolve? Oh, I envision Unibio becoming a global company in 10 years' time. Um, I see our particle, our biodegradable particle, being used with all kinds of molecules. That means being used as a formulation on all type of fertilizers and pesticides that farmers are using to grow the food we eat. Mm -hmm. And that could mean, for example, partnering with a Bayer Monsanto mm -hmm. and helping them to bring to farmers a new version of the herbicide that is more sustainable, or even helping them to bring to the market a new molecule from biological origin that is not yet in the market, but is uh, non-toxic and efficient as the chemical one. Mm -hmm. And what impact do you imagine that you'll have in the wider, broader agricultural ecosystem? So of course we are going to help the chemical companies to bring new innovative products for farmers and help them to win and gain new markets. But for farmers, this new development will mean helping them to use less application rates, so applying less often these products and reducing the labor costs related to that, or even the costs related to the manipulation of these toxic chemicals. Mm -hmm. And even in the long run, we are helping them to avoid degrading the soil that they need to produce the food we eat. Mm -hmm. Sounds like an amazing vision of the future. Now looking back, as CEO of Unibio, what have you been most proud to accomplish today? Yeah, I could say that we are really proud of being partnering with the biggest fertilizer company in the world, and we are doing a pilot together. But what I'm more proud of is bringing uh, basic science from Argentina, that it was made from 
four amazing female scientists mm -hmm. to a global scale. They invited me to join this company a few years ago, and we started to dream this dream together. So I am really proud of that and also very grateful to them. It's an incredible story. And uh, I have to ask, we're in Manhattan and I'm looking around, there are no farms. So why did you choose uh, New York? And also why did you choose Indie Bio New York's program? Yeah, it doesn't look so obvious why we could be here in New York in the Big Apple near to the Empire State. But the thing is we are not partnering with farmers mm -hmm. or targeting farmers. We are partnering with the big chemical companies in this industry and most of them are settle in uh, Missouri, in the Midwest, North Carolina, or even countries in Europe like Germany or Switzerland. Mm -hmm. 10 companies shares half of the global market and they are both in Europe and the US. Mm -hmm. So being here in New York logistically makes a lot of sense for us. We can have in the same day a meeting with the teams uh, of development teams in the US and Europe. And also we are very close by to meet in person with them mm -hmm. just being here in New York. Yeah, it really is the center of the world. Um, so thank you again, Matthias, for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking. Thank you. I think this approach of trying to accelerate the transition in the way we present our value is pretty unique, but we are pretty sure and convinced that we can create a bigger impact if we start working now with something that we can use now to change the future from now to that green future. One in 10 women will be diagnosed with endometriosis, a debilitating disease where tissue similar to the lining of the uterus is found somewhere else in the body. It can cause excruciating pain, unbearable cramps, bloating, lower back, pelvic, or abdominal pain, and even worse, infertility. Can you tell which of these women has endometriosis just by looking at them? No? Well, neither can a doctor. On average, a diagnosis takes 5 to 12 years. That's 5 to 12 years of days spent in medical offices, weeks spent waiting for results, and often hours of phone calls only to be told that everything is normal, or worse yet, it's all in your head. At some point, the word endometriosis might be mentioned, but then more time is spent waiting for surgery to diagnose it. Why can't we detect something that impacts so many sooner? At Affinia, we can. We've developed a blood test that takes days, not years, to get an answer. It works by measuring specific biomarkers in your blood that tell us the likelihood your symptoms are caused by endometriosis. Our test is sensitive enough to use at the first sign of symptoms and gives you and your doctor the information needed to make more informed decisions about your treatment options starting today not years from now. Affinia's goal is to reduce the time for diagnosis from years to days and help explain the pain for the over 195 million women diagnosed with this chronic condition. Affinia, explain the pain. Uh, I'm now joined by Jocelyn, who's a co-founder and CSO of Affinia. Tell me what Affinia does, Jocelyn. Thanks, Steve. So Affinia is a revenue generating women's health diagnostic company that's developed the first blood test for endometriosis. Endometriosis is a chronic condition that affects one in 10 women worldwide. Uh, and presently it takes five to 12 years to get a diagnosis. And that's because people have to go for surgery to be diagnosed. So at Affinia, we didn't want people to wait that long, and we developed a blood test that can detect endometriosis in days as opposed to years that it's currently taking. Wow, that's amazing. That, 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 is, that is truly amazing. Thank you. Uh, so how are you looking to scale Affinia? So presently, we're selling into fertility clinics because women with endometriosis actually have infertility as one of the symptoms, oftentimes. So our first channel to market is in fertility clinics, then we plan to expand to healthcare practitioners more gen generally. And then our third channel to market would be a direct to consumer market to ac access anyone anywhere who's suffering from pain or infertility and wants to know why. Okay. And how are you looking to grow uh, the core team that you have at Affinia? 
Right, so part of our current raise will be to expand the team um, to increase marketing and sales capacities across North America. Um, and really, we're just looking to start with our own contacts. Both Lauren and I, my co-founder Lauren and I, are former uh, academic scientists in endometriosis research. So we have a lot of contacts in fertility clinics and we're really leveraging those contacts to, to go out into the market and bring this test to the people that need it. Okay, and if you were to highlight one success, um, recent success, what would it be? The one that comes to mind is selling $51,000 of tests in our first month of sales. Wow, that's amazing. That, that, that is truly amazing. And um, so you're one of our companies that we've uh, recruited from Canada. Uh, so can you tell us a bit about, um, you know, has it been working in New York City? Thanks. It's been great. Um, I mean, I was hoping the weather would be a little bit warmer than where we're from, but unfortunately it's about the same. Maybe a few degrees warmer here, um, but New York is amazing. There's so much going on all the time. You know, you can go downstairs and literally grab a coffee from Starbucks without really even putting a jacket on. You could go to any restaurant, any kind of cuisine that you'd like to try, um, any shows, those sorts of things. They're all within walking distance pretty much. Okay. Well, we've really enjoyed having you in the program. Thank you. It's been yeah. a pleasure. Thank you. So one of the first questions we get asked by investors is, is this really that big of a problem? And sometimes it's pulling out quotes of people who just can't live their lives in this pain anymore and can't participate fully in life. Sometimes it's the numbers around the market size. Sometimes it's the number of doctors who are coming to us and asking, how can we help you develop your test? Well, there you have it. Nine of our latest companies. Thank you so much for joining us for our class seven demo day. Remember, if you registered for the event as an accredited investor, you have access to each of the company decks and links to book time to meet with the founders. If you're interested in applying to the IndieBio program, visit our website at indiebio.co. Thanks, and hope to see you at our next demo day.